Hello! In this video, we're going to look at UK resellers and QuickBooks to see how that can help you in terms of keeping an eye on your stock. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, certified UK trainer, and also a UK reseller. After watching a recent video with Nick, Andrea and Mel, they talked about how stock and a better way of thinking about it. And they did a really great, great analogy, and I'll point you to the video, where they talked about how, from their point of view, or from Mel's point of view, it's not worth having a detailed stock management system when you're doing UK reselling. Because really, from our point of view, as long as you've brought enough items in and you've got those items in, and you're selling items that are quick, if you make a loss or a small or break even on a particular one item, overall that shouldn't have any effect. And it's a really good way of looking at it, really useful. Now my only caveat to that is you're gonna have some real high value items. And those high value items may be the ones that you wanna think about have de dealing in a different way, in a separate way. So that's what this video is about. It's about looking to see if there's a better way in which we can account for those sort of items. Now, at this point in time, during the place we're in and the situation we're in, for me, I have got very little stock. So keep an eye on my stock management is really super simple. In fact, if I look and go behind the camera a little bit, and if we start looking into how my stock levels are doing, you can see I am dwindling to the point of there's pretty much nothing of any value in there. But even then, there's still one or two items where I paid a pretty penny for the product in the first place. So I wanna make sure that I don't do myself some injustice and I wanna get a minimum level that I'm willing to take on it. If at this point they've stayed around and it is a point where I'm thinking to myself, actually, I'm better off taking a hit on it and maybe taking a small loss on it, then that's fair enough. I wanna make sure, I wanna understand to make sure that have I got everything in place so that I don't accidentally sell something at a loss. And I think the key to this is unintentionally selling something at a loss. If you're intending to make something or, or sell something at a small loss because you wanna get that money back, reinvest in something you know is worthwhile selling, then that's fair game. But if you accidentally sell something and you weren't intending to sell it at that particular price, that's when you're gonna feel like you're kicking yourself down a little bit. So to keep that working, I think definitely the idea of majority of your stock, we just want to account for as money in, money out, and it's a cash flow game at that point. You bring your money in, you reinvest it, and you keep moving it and moving it around. But let's consider those high value items. And let's consider how QuickBooks can actually help you managing those high value items going forward. So before I deep dive into it anymore, here is an example of the sort of mess that I was getting myself into in terms of my stock valuation. And I'm not gonna go this in, in through any detail or look into it or anything in, in any great manner, but really I went completely overkill. And every item that we had listed on our eBay store at that point in time was on that list. And I had this real kind of um, unproductive way of looking at it where every item we had to make and, and I was doing crazy calculations where I was finding to the penny exactly how much I could sell things for and everything else. And it really was kind of hampering the way in which we were dealing with items because I've even got here so something that I, if I didn't make £7.95 on it, then that particular item was gonna lose us money. And when you're looking at this as a Disney DVD player, then you're probably gonna be happy to get any of that money back just so you can reinvest it if it's gonna be a slow burner. So I completely agree with the methodology that was talked about on Nick and Andrea's show. But what I would suggest though is just to protect yourself, those high value items, let's make sure you've got those recorded nicely and let's wonder or let's have a look and see, can QuickBooks replace a spreadsheet where, let's be honest, can get a little bit overwhelming. It gets a bit to a point where, where do you stop? And let's think if there's any way in QuickBooks where you can make that nice and easy for you. And one thing QuickBooks does have going for it is a stock management feature. So if I go into my accounts and settings and I have a look at my advanced tab and I have a look at my sales tab, you'll notice that when I look at my sales tab, 
I have the opportunity under products and services to track stock quantity on hand. Now, this can be used in two ways. You can have the ability that if you've got lots of a particular item, then maybe that's quite a nice thing that you want to do, where you want to actually start putting those items in and you want to start thinking about, I've got 50 items and I want to make sure I keep selling them at a profit. And as those dwindling sales might go down, you might start to put discounts on everything else. If you track the quantity of how many you've got, so you had 50 to begin with, 25 left, etc., etc., QuickBooks can handle that bit for you. Or you can treat every stock item as an individual item. That tends to be how I would go about it. So for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to put onto my stock management system these Sony headphones. Now, these are quite a high value item. They're an item where really I want to make sure that I get the minimum amount for and I probably won't be looking to sell any put a discount on whatsoever. So if I looked at my old system and it was item 1801, I go to 1801 on here, I go across, I purchased this in February, I had a hammer cost because I bought this at an auction of £101. So that means I have to sell this at £200 and 79p for me to make sure that I do make a nice profit that I'm willing to take on it. But that doesn't, but that's not the lowest I will go. That's the figure that I'm aiming for at that point in time. Now, <laughs> for me to get to that figure was a long and painful process and a calculation using various different calculations about seven or eight different columns until I got to the figure that I would deem I was happy with. Now this item still hasn't sold yet, so at some point I'm gonna to have to make a decision. The thing is on this particular item is I bought a job lot of these, I bought three or four off the top of my head, um, and the rest of them have sold really, really well, and I've got, I've got a, a really good amount for it. But for some reason, this one's been up for a while. I keep getting offers that fall just below what I'm willing to take. Um, and basically it's a case now of deciding do I go for it or not. But before I do that though, I wanna make it nice and easy for myself to be able to keep an eye on this within QuickBooks. Because the nice thing about QuickBooks is it's always with you. So I can have it on my phone. If that eBay does come in and I do see that figure, I don't have to try and remember what that required sale is. I could try and get that information into QuickBooks and make it easy for me. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna account for the cost of this item, first of all. So I'm gonna go new, and this time I'm gonna call it an expense. From an expense, I'm gonna say, who do I pay? John Pye. I'm gonna leave it as a bank in today's date. You'd obviously make sure that's correct per the invoice. And the key is here, because I've turned on product and services, I'm not gonna use my category detail. I'm going to use my item detail. And what that does is gives me an opportunity to add a brand new product and service into here. And I'm gonna keep it dead straightforward. 1081 is my product number. Helps me find it within the product area. I'm gonna call it Sony. Sony WH-1000's MX M3. I love Sony headphones, but they have to figure out a better naming for these. And the idea here is I wanna create this as a stock item. So I click on stock. My initial quantity of hand was zero. Today's date for the uh, as of date or the date that you purchased it. And I'd probably put it in a new category just to keep that list of your product and services nice and clean. And I'd call it something like M press save. I'm happy it's going to stock account, income account and expense account. If you want to make your, uh, your reporting more complicated and you want more out of it, you could change that accordingly if needed to. But my sales price is the key bit. This is what I'm the minimum I want to take for this one. So I wouldn't put the 200. I've just spent 150 quid on getting the item. You know, there could be some um, eBay fees and that lot included there as well. But let's figure out or let's figure, worry about that when we come to what platform we're going to sell it on. But the minimum I'm going to take on this is 150 pounds. I then press, uh, from a tax point of view, I'm gonna keep it nice and straightforward and not gonna have any tax whatsoever. Press save and close, and this item is here. Now the way I would do it is I'd do hammer price, just so I know, which was 100 pounds, and put no VAT, because I don't wanna complicate things with VAT at this point in time. And I'd put another stock, but this I'd put uh, auction fee and VAT, and let's just say that was 50 quid save and close okay so now if i wanted to run a stock report 
you'll see my Sony's are there and I have 150 pounds worth of stock value there. So that's gonna make it nice and easy if I need to have a look at stock for any reason or whatever it's going to be. But if I wanted to look at this on the phone, that's why having that stock valuation and the sale price is quite useful. Because at any point, if I wanted to bring up my products and sales on back on the computer, I could go and look at products and services. And they're under my stock for sale, 1801, 150 pounds. So that's great. But what would be more useful is being that just having it available on your phone if you need it. So I'm gonna bring up my phone. So this phone just here. And from there, I've just logged myself into QuickBooks. And if I was to use the little menu button at the bottom, look at my products and services under my stock for sale 1801 Sony WH100XM3, 150 pounds. And as I add more and more stock to this, I will have access to it. So I can keep an eye on making sure that I get the minimum amount that I want for that particular stock item. And there you have it. That's just a quick way in which QuickBooks can help you keep stock on. Now, the stock functionality is only available in the higher tier versions of QuickBooks, but for that idea of just showing you how much that price is, you can achieve that on any version of QuickBooks and including the self-employed QuickBooks app, which is really popular along with resellers. Hopefully that's been useful to you. If you do have any questions or anything else, do drop them in the comments below. If you need a copy of QuickBooks at all, over at Boffix, they can make sure you get a really good deal on a version of QuickBooks, paying far less than you would if you went to QuickBooks Direct. My name's Aaron Patrick. I've been looking after you on this video today. And if you do want to do the like, subscribe and everything else, just to keep this channel ticking over nicely, that would be hugely appreciated. But for now, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. I say yeah, 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 yeah. I told him I can be a fighter. I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do Everything's really new Even if we're staying back My heart is saying yeah, yeah